What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 406 of Opinions May Vary. I am your host, JR, and my co-host with me, Alex. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. We're doing, we're a little old school today. We're doing back to back, but but with good reason, because um, we have a really cool guest today. We spoke with uh, with this person last year in early March, and it was actually, it was kind of a big deal amongst like, <laughs> At least our group, yeah. our friends, um, we we talked with Jason Gins- Ginsburg. Jason, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. I'm happy to be back. I, I say that it caused kind of a like an up, not uproar, but like in a good way, because after we talked, um, it was episode 363 for anyone who hasn't heard it. Or if you want to go back and reminisce before listening to this episode, you can go back and take a listen. But when we posted that episode. I had at least like four people that like within a couple minutes reach out to me to be like, dude, you got fake theme park. (laughs) (laughs) One in particular said that is huge. (laughs) Uh, Because we have a a vast network of theme park friends from the one that we work at locally or worked, excuse me, uh, locally. And then also people that we've met doing the show, people that we've met through our our. Uh, our contacts and, and so on and so forth. So a lot of them are were well aware of fake theme park um, because it is amazing. Um, it's satire in its finest. <laughs> and uh, a lot of our friends were psyched that, that we got to talk to you. So, I mean, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but it's just, <laughs> I think it speaks to the, the product that you've put out and we're psyched to have you back. Well, thank you. I'm just, I uh, was realizing 406, episodes that i thought i was wasting my time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really the devotion uh it's very impressive yeah. yeah yeah we're getting there but um we have we're doing this uh there's there's a a celebration here in that one it's rad to talk to you and you have a really cool thing and uh it's exciting in in, in and of itself but fake theme park uh, next month, which is going to be in July of 2020, depending on whenever you're listening to this, Fake Theme Park is celebrating its 10-year anniversary. So I believe some some congratulations are in order. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations. Now, I'm, I'm not even sure where to where it kind of gets started with this, but I got it like 10 years. It is not easy to maintain stuff like we've been doing this show for eight years um and sometimes it is just like holy god where did the time go um but 10 years that is that is a feat especially staying fresh and creative like because it is really easy to just fall back into the same jokes and like or just give up you know what i've (laughs) I've, I've done my thing I've, i've said all i need to say i guess i'm good but like and we're going to get into this a little bit. Giving up um, is so easy to do, too. It's so easy. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> what are you guys trying to say? <laughs> no, no, no. Final episode of Opinions May Vary on Bond. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. <clears throat> well, we had a good run. Uh, <laughs> but there was I, one thing I really liked you uh, had sent out. Uh, There's a press release uh, regarding it, and, and it referenced the first tweet which in it it says you know it wasn't it wasn't that good i i don't know i I still feel like even right off the bat you were you were charging out the gate with with prime satire for anyone who worked at a theme park would be able to understand uh from july 12th 2010 heard about our twilight ticket end of the park after 6 p.m for just 35 dollars note the park closes at seven which is (laughs) (laughs) everyone's been there everyone's experienced (laughs) ah <laughs> uh, good times <laughs> the good old days uh yes is there a question in there i'm, <laughs> no, 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 I'm, no, I'm happy to uh, <laughs> do uh yeah that was that was my very first tweets um july 12th 2010 uh yeah little did i know then that it would 10 years later i'd still be doing this literally every single day every single single that there's been not a single day off not every day has had the full complement of all four i used to do four a day occasionally i have things to do with my life and it's not four on on twitter and you do one or two on facebook but it has literally been every single day i do use a uh want to say i use a scheduler um who tweet who's not paying me 
<laughs> any money to say this. Uh, I know Twitter's getting its own scheduling apparently very soon, but uh, that's, I'm not always doing this stuff live. A lot of times I am, but uh, it's a lot easier to use. You, if I get some ideas, it's all at once. Schedule through Hootsuite, and then it goes off by itself, and then I come back later and drink in the adulation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I I want to ask having, you know, having 10 years under your belt. Have you been able to look back and see like what past jokes or or tweets or comments like maybe haven't aged well and would, would you, like is it are you nervous keeping them around or you go mm, I should get rid of this one or will it are you really proud when you know your jokes can keep hitting year after year? <laughs> Uh, somewhere between, certainly not, not, I don't, uh, nothing has been, I, I, I try to be very careful. I mean, I have a background in, if you can say this in comedy, I have done comedy performing and writing, and this is a kind of an exercise in that. It keeps, it's one thing I get to do. No one can tell me no, there's, there's no producer, there's no agents, there's, you know, there's no director to, to get in the way. I just communicate with the fans directly and I uh, they dog ride back. So it's a, a great kind of comedy experience for me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. <laughs> it's nice to have no, no barrier at all. So I, I'm very careful of the line. And this is a, this is, it comes from a place of love. Uh, for those people who don't know, I was a tour guide at Universal Studios Hollywood for many years. Not for a summer, not for a year, a long time I was there uh, doing the regular tour, a VIP tour. I was a perfect character for one summer. I did the backdraft show back when that was back when it existed hmm. before it became Transformers. Uh, I was out front doing announcements because the VIP guys did that too. So I was on the microphone telling you what line to get in and things like that. So I have a lot of experience with the park just as an employee and obviously as a lover of movies uh, and, and a Disney fan. I don't mind saying that. I'm not really a coaster person. I'm not, I don't, I am scared of coasters. I can't do those, but Disney universal all the way. Love, love them. Sea world too. So, I try. No joke is really mean. I mean, everyone. It's 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 not anything that's. I mean, I hardly ever swear. I only ever occasionally, occasionally, occasionally swear, and that's for impact. Like by never doing it, when I do, when I do it, it's actually a big deal. Mm. Um, so that's. I, I I don't think there's anything offensive. Once in a great while, there's some kind of complaint. But we're just making fun of like guests, <laughs> but uh, everyone gets to eat, everyone gets to eat evenly. The the corporate, you know, the corporations, the unions, the guests, the employees, uh, everyone is, is subject to this because I've seen it all, and I've been I've been all those people. I mean, not so much management, so I I feel it's 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 fair. So the fact that they can, I hope they're fresh. Ten years from now, they still should apply because theme park experience hopefully has never changed. We'll see if that is true in the future. For what it's worth, I've been out of the theme park business for my last year was 2007. So 13 years now. And these still I'm scrolling your Twitter page right like right now. And they still hit home <laughs> like I get every single one of them like, yep, yep, that's a thing. That's the thing. Yep, I get that. Um, so it, I feel like it's going to be relevant for a long time coming. I don't know what that if that's if that's just an even what that says about theme parks in general, but <laughs> but they uh, but these are still hitting um, for what it's worth. Well, no, thank you. I mean, that means a lot. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to ask about it, keeping it fresh. In ten years, things have changed. Uh, you know, when I I I was occasionally making sort of Star Wars jokes. I'm a big Star Wars fan because uh, there were Star Tours. Mm -hmm. But now, then I'll during the, the last ten years, Disney bought Star Wars. Well, that changed everything. Now, superhero right. films were not that big of a deal. I mean, oh wait, was Iron Man? That was the very beginning of this whole universe. Oh, Look man. what we have now. <laughs> so it's been interesting to and now we obviously have parks are closed, which is a completely whole new. I mean, I've I've had just struggled with how to. I mean, look, this, this pandemic has been far worse for far many more people. But for me, it has been somewhat tough. I've had many jokes about this when there's nothing happening, when there's no – I've talked about – you may see jokes about, like, movies because there's no park. You can't, you, you can't say a present, jo present tense joke about a park. Mm -hmm. Right now, the line for Chaos Coaster is, well, no, there's no line. No, Everyone knows because my universe is the same as, you know, our universe, so all, the park is closed too. Uh, so now the things are starting to open up again and even having city walk open and things like Disney Springs that allowed me to do some of those jokes. But it was, I know one, please don't want to cry for me, but it was challenging because was, this was never this format for nine years to do this. So all of a sudden I had to adapt to what happens when all the parks are closed. It was never really something I thought of in terms of writing comedy about theme parks. We were chatting about that. Me and JR were chatting about this in, in pre-show and we both ag agreed like you've been handling it really well. 
and yeah. just as like watching them come out because you know we've had the past x number of years of like something current culture happens and then there's a lot of jokes that pile onto it and after a day all of them are passe all of them are boring we don't care don't make a theme song for your morning talk show radio thing and and now like seeing what you're coming up with it's like it's still fun it still has a level a level of innocence it's it's still humorous and you're not killing it you're not overdoing it you're not beating a dead horse and i feel you've you've shown a fair amount of restraint but still a level of of skill to produce what you have well, thank you. This is I, 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 I'm I'm very, I'm very flattered. All those things I do try again. It comes from a place of love. I don't hate. This is not you know. There's those blogs and and podcasts that were uh, angry waiter and angry hotel concierge. <laughs> yeah. They just hate everyone they had ever, ever dealt with. And I don't feel I was there. I you know I I saw people responding not only to me <laughs> getting a VIP tour, but to King Kong, to Jaws, to Spider Man coming up to them and shaking their hand. Uh, it was you know we're making people would say they were only coming here once in their life, coming all you know from Iowa or somewhere to, to Hollywood was such a big deal to them. It, I you know I felt that so I and I felt it myself. And I, I walked as a VIP guide. You get to walk on the sets, not to plug the experience, but it is fantastic. <laughs> you get to walk around the back lot, and I was still it still impressed me to be there. That this is where the Sting was shot. This is where Back to the Future was shot. This is where the monster movies are shot in the European set. That's uh, that's a big deal. So I uh, yeah I don't hate. This isn't like this is some kind of axe to grind. Uh, there's just too much to make fun of. I saw the, how the sausage was made. I think we all ha- we see, you know, there's there's so much scrutiny on Disney in particular that we see the the this for the silly hypocrisy. It's not so it's not so terrible. Lives aren't really on stake, but there are things people love. Their franchises, their rides, their characters that inspires such insanity, and then mm-hmm. the weird responses from the corporations that own these these. Uh, franchises so uh yeah this is, it is this is not if you're like i'm gonna stick it to the theme park if you want to read that that's not my account i don't do that it's just it's loving it's satire it's not totally gentle but yeah i'm not me i don't i'm not i don't hate these things oh no well i i was specifically talking about your your pandemic material oh well as, oh, as, as think, far yeah, as as far as like not overblowing it or you know beating the joke too hard it's you've you've handled it softly but still funny and it's at no point do i go oh boy what's he gonna say now like what's what's the new covid joke gonna be and it's it's still it's still something that keeps me coming back you you haven't ruined it and i you know and that's what i want to congratulate you for (laughs) well thank you there's there's one tweet that i keep as i'm scrolling i keep i see it because i'm scrolling up and down but there's one that keeps killing me and it's <laughs> i'm sorry i'm laugh talking i'm doing the i'm laughing before telling the joke because oh my god it's so funny but i'm not actually telling you the joke but it's drone footage drone footage of our park during the closure so beautifully serene and it's like a drone flyover shot of like an industrial yard <laughs> it's just oh man it's killing me um <laughs> Go go oh, follow mine? at at Fake Theme Park on on Twitter. Um, it's it's if you are a fan of theme parks, if you worked at a theme park, you are very much missing out on something awesome. If you are not <laughs> following it, this is just turning into one of those classic OMV uh, gush to the person we're chatting with without actually asking them questions, <laughs> and then just and then just gush some more. Um, <laughs> But in, it's just it's just but let's talk about the um, the festivities that, that you have going on so that we have the 10 year anniversary, uh, which is going to be coming up next month. Um, and it sounds like you've got a lot of stuff going on throughout the month of June to to celebrate that. What do you have going on? Yes, uh, it's a week long celebration. Uh, starting right after the 4th of July. That counts down to July 12th. Uh, so the, the, obviously the park will be talking about itself. I haven't had to do this very often. Occasionally, I mimic what Disney is doing, but the park, the park will be having festivities in its own universe that you can then read about, which I think might go horribly wrong. I don't know. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Uh, so that's in universe, and then here in our real world, I got two special things, big things happening that are that are that will happen. <laughs> uh, Starting the week of July fifth, uh, one is the first ever podcast interview with Princess Rainbow, as she is the 
the, the, you know, beloved park icon um, who has who's been featured in the books and and, mm-hmm. and and various accounts. I've done interviews in print as her, where people ask me questions in email and I respond as her. No one's ever heard her voice. She has mm-hmm. never had even the princess in the music video was actually intentionally not her. <laughs> so to, to to not ruin it for anyone, have people whatever there's an imagination. I had a different princess, different 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 gown, did a different name, uh, but this really really in quotes is her. I uh, have a very fine voice actor who I've known for several years now, Ivy Dupler, who is very big in the gaming world and doing some animation and commercials, uh, who who's portrayed her. So you'll hear that interview. I'm interviewing her. Just just me. Just some random. Apparently, anybody can do a podcast. <laughs> just <laughs> set up and ask questions. <laughs> so I just ask questions that she is funny. So that is that will be released uh, on how uh, you tell me what podcast I think it released. Audacity, Spotify, something, uh, and YouTube. So you just listen to it. You will see her. You still be in your imagination, whatever she looks like. But uh, she has some fun things to say about uh, her fellow princesses and the theme park and reopening during the pandemic. That's one thing. The other one is um, a new song. I mentioned the other song, the princess song that's a couple years old. It's now a, I have a sort of parody of the Mickey Mouse Club march. I thought that was something that could be could relate to into big theme park. So I have Jimmy Jaguar as sort of my stand in for Mickey Mouse. He has his own <laughs> march. And so the march is basically all the instructions and the rules for how to join the club for which the song <laughs> exists. So there's quite a lot of uh, requirements and documents you need to join the Jimmy Jaguar club. <laughs> so the song is just their whole list of sort of almost like a terms of service to song. <laughs> So I have a. Uh, I'm Nick imagining, is the I'm imagining kids like having to sign all these papers and provide <laughs> like proof of ID. <laughs> right, and it costs money to join. Of course, and there's dues. It's not. It's not a free club, but that's not the big theme park way. <laughs> Excellent. So I've got uh, uh, Nick Hudson, who is a, a British composer. He actually is also something of a podcaster. I don't know if he competes with you. Um, it's the season pass podcast. He's the sort of the British arm of that group, mm-hmm. and he composes music for theme parks for real. He has music in parks in England, in Berlin, in Paris, in some of the Asian countries. Uh, so he has uh, have a relationship with him through the Scenes Past podcast, and he's written the music. I've written a whole bunch of words that I hope uh, are funny. Very different doing jokes that have to rhyme. <laughs> and that'll also be out, uh, again, on, on, on some audio form, I guess, even on iTunes. So you can even purchase it, which I strongly recommend. <laughs> Why listen to it over and over again for free when you can just buy it once and never listen to it again? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's a two big thing. And the other thing happening that's not such a such so hard for me to do is to give away uh, the, the books. I've got two of them now. Um, yes, they're self-published. Before you go to Amazon and look, yes, it's just me. Uh, me and Amazon and Lulu are the, uh, the people behind us. Uh, so those, those books are – they cost money. They're real. They actually, you can actually buy them, and I'll be giving some away through various giveaways and contests I'll do throughout the week. Because why not? They've been out for a while now. People seem not, to not want to buy them. Well, I'll show them. I'll give them away. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, even with a uh, fun fact, not many people know as far as self public, there is there ain't nothing wrong with self publishing because uh, there's a book called Fifty Shades of Grey. Not comparing <laughs> your your work to Fifty Shades of Grey, of course, but Fifty Shades of Grey was originally self published. Um, and then we all know what happened with that. Yes. Uh, uh, yep. I believe The Martian was also was uh, just on his uh, anywhere's blog. Like he was doing chapter by chapter yeah, on the blog right? where it got bought. Yeah. Hmm. Yo, for the record, The Martian, that book owns. I don't, <laughs> I don't We're not going to talk books right now, but damn, that book blew me away. Um, anyways, so yes, uh, you're going to be giving away uh, copies of your two books. Uh, if the princess rolls her eyes, your wish will come true from 2018. <laughs> And you must be this tall to exit the park. From... Now, did that book exist the last time we talked? The, the second one, You Must Be This Tall to Exit the Park, it says it came out in 2019. Was that? It was we... late. Yeah, that was uh, October, October, November. Gotcha. So just, yeah, it was about six, seven months ago. Now, is that just, um, is that another collection of, of fake theme park uh, material? I'm glad you asked me that question. Ooh. It is actually <laughs> a combination of classic posts that have been curated by my subjects as well as all new material that you can't find anywhere else and must pay me to see. <laughs> is that how you, that's how you pitch things, right? That's how yeah. you play. Yeah. That's, okay. yeah, that's, that's, how, you, that's so, how we yes, try. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some, so there's a, like a, for one thing, uh, the first book doesn't have Christmas. This book, the second book has Halloween. 
Ooh. For example, just break things up. The first book had the princesses all being interviewed. This one has Murph Gentley, the park's founder, mm-hmm. has an interview. Uh, there's a script for the uh, the cast member orientation film. So I have you can't see the film, of course, but you can read the script <laughs> for it. Uh, it's like a transcript of it in the book. So as well as that, you will maybe recognize some of the material, but some of the chapters. But it's very clear what is all, all new. It was a print, uh, forward by Princess Rainbow and afterward by Princess Snowflake. It also was new materials. So uh, yes, yeah, worth every penny. Now, the the press release also says that uh, you're going to be posting um, uh, jokes, images, and videos from the last ten years. Speaking from somewhat uh, recent experience, we we had our eight year anniversary a couple months ago, and Alex and I each did our our top eight uh, favorite uh, episodes, like in no particular order. It was just, hey, these are individually, you know, my my top eight, Alex's top eight, and we counted them down over the course of a couple weeks. And going back and looking through, and we only had eight years of of mm-hmm. uh, of content, not not ten years of like up to upwards of four a day uh, <laughs> uh, posts. But it, going back and looking at stuff, it's really easy to get nostalgic and like you forget about some things. Like, oh damn, that was awesome. We did talk with that person. That was so rad. Um, I'm I'm assuming you've already done this, but was it? How how was it going back, going back, looking through your material, finding the best ones? You know, was that did you have those kind of same emotions or was it just, you know, I'm I'm well aware of the content that I put out and uh, I'm going to pick and choose these these good ones. Uh, well, my wife will tell you that I would read I have the archive. Twitter has an archive function. So I have everything in a spreadsheet and I was still making myself laugh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means so i was surprised by it and still was so surprised that i read it as if it was for the first time so yeah there's so many uh you know not not to brag but there's just so much there's so much volume especially in the early years when it only was four times a day and i've strived to make it when the parks open again i'll probably do it four again but nothing's happening so it's hard to make jokes uh it's, there's a lot there is a, a great deal so i it, it, we, we, nothing you can sort of tell what season it is. I mean, summer things come up, and then Halloween and Christmas. Other times, some jokes are just random. A joke about a corn dog or something, and you just that could have been from any time of year, any year. Occasionally, some political things at various time. There's like the Olympics <laughs> for a few years, but otherwise, yes, it's just it's a, a lot to go through and find what uh, not only what there's the, what I like, but you see what did well. You, know, you instantly see if things got had, had got a response. So I'm trying to bounce out uh, what people love and also, hey, this joke deserves <laughs> <laughs> attention. So I'm going to force it on you again. Have you ever, if this is a weird joke to ask or weird question to ask, you know, comedians or writers, is there ever a struggle between something you've worked on really hard and something you just kind of came off the top of your head? Because there's a group of comedians I like from Australia called Auntie Donna. And during a live show, they were talking about their material. And they're like, yeah, there's been a bit we've worked on for seven months, and it has like less than 40,000 downloads. And then a thing we came up in literally three hours has millions. <laughs> and it's like, we <laughs> don't know what works. We do not know. <laughs> so I guess that's my my question is, is the do you get to see the metrics come back and like what you've really worked on and like put a lot of thought into and what just kind of sprung to your head out of out of nowhere? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised in both directions sometimes. L- less so these days. Uh, I can sort of tell what's going to... I, I've, I, I wish I was doing more analytics on this, really, but I, I have an idea now of what people respond to. What I what I didn't quite expect was when people that are have theme park experience are the ones following me. It's really meant for a general audience. I like the, I like the, the not people out there that are fans of either Disney or Universal or Coasters or Six Flags or SeaWorld somewhere in the whole world. They're destinations after all but i get a lot of people that seem to like the jokes about the employees they know that's their experience respond to that more than just i went to disney once and yeah it was the corn dogs were like that <laughs> so it's i should begin to think more about what is what does an employee think of this the employee level view um so yes that those do well maybe you're seeing that a lot with the people as the, the pandemic as the reopening nears uh they keep the cast member concerns about that but anything else, there's jokes I make that I think are I, I've when I stray too far, that gets no one seems to respond. Like I've mentioned, we've I, I'm a, a football fan. If I get, get sports in there, no one seems to care. No matter how much I try, that just does not seem to work. I mean, generally, don't do much in politics really, but that 
it seems that people don't seem to really care. They don't come for that, I guess. Uh, I can do a little more sci-fi now, now that Disney owns Star Wars and everyone mm-hmm. and the films have come out since then. So uh, that that does better. Uh, but good to see there's still a lot of love there because I was concerned about it. I never really no one likes Star Wars, but they, they do. They do do have not as many minutes as the princesses, but. Uh, so yeah, I'm still doing analytics sort of live as I look at this stuff to see what what might do well. But in terms of how much I, I don't work on things that long, mm-hmm. I do work on them. Uh, especially back was only 140 characters that really made you uh, think <laughs> and had to get it down that far. It's a lot easier now. I do a lot of lists now. You might scroll around and see, boy, Jason likes those lists. <laughs> a bullet point, you know, the, the following are then so five things in a row. I love list jokes. Uh, I have a better chance of anything. Some, something has to be funny out of those five, right? You know, the odds are in your favor. So that that's the real concern. Is trying to get it in, in that space of 280. Because on Facebook, there's you, know, you go on and on and on. So yeah, I will work on something. Try to phrase. What am I? What? How do I get this to? What am I trying to say here? And even the old rule of try to put the funny thing at the end. The the the, the funniest thing should be the end. To be like the last word. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you just have wasted words. Mm-hmm. So that if you have a joke and then. While he was sleeping, I'm like, there's four words that no one, no one, they've already hit the joke. So what do you keep? What are you still reading for? I try to make sure that last word, or last couple of words, is, is the punchline. But you may think oh, that's so easy. Well, that's not. It's depending on what you're trying to say. <laughs> you don't want to telegraph the joke too much. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that answers whatever the question was. I've yeah. forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy's hard. It is. Mm. It is not easy, uh, especially. In, when you're doing it for so long, keeping it fresh, keeping it, but you've managed to do it uh, in in spades. Even just looking at the the most recent one hits double. In 2021, we're opening Steampunk Land. Just one question: What is steampunk? Which coming from uh, we are we're fans of steampunk. We've been to steampunk shows in the past. One of the first shows we ever covered was a steampunk show. Um, and even having been to these shows and spending hours and hours and days and days. I I can't answer that question. <laughs> um, and also, but, like, no two steampunks are going to answer that the same way either. Yeah, yeah they got a lot of responses. That was yeah, that meant it was meant to be. Uh, no offense, fans, just a joke. <laughs> it was, it was not, not an actual question, it was a rhetorical question, and people have responded. Sometimes, you know, honestly, and I'll often. With a joke, someone said, uh, "Steampunk is when goths discover the color brown." Yep. Hey, man, that's <laughs> that joke lives in my thread. You just gave that to me. <laughs> so yeah, it's been fun to have people interact. I'm happy uh, to do that. I, so okay, hey, we'll even ask questions or do polls, which you can do on both on both social accounts, and see if people, you know, have a chance to interact rather than just listen to the joke and hit like. Or more retweet, more usefully for me. Uh, <laughs> out there, likes are great. Retweets are even better, everyone. That's fine. coming from a, a Twitter aficionado. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, a joke like that. Can you can ask a question and get responses? Uh, something, something as simple as that. No lists. <laughs> not two hundred eighty characters. Very just two sentences. One of which isn't funny. And the first one is basically could be a real park doing this. I'm, I'm, well, I'm just waiting for it to happen. And it's the other, the second sentence is the punchline. One thing I am very curious about, there's there's a subreddit called Ate the Onion, which is a reference to The Onion, which is a satire website. There's there's a lot of satire sites like Hard Times, The Onion, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a whole subreddit called Ate the Onion, which is like screenshots, mostly of like comments, comment sections, retweets, things like that, of people who mistook satire for something legitimate or or like real news and they say like oh you know such and such ate the onion they believed this article about whatever you know Mm -hmm. um have you ever had someone eat the onion when it comes to your content has someone like have you ever experienced that i not not quite the same way one thing that the name is there if you see any, any their right. name is fake theme park. It isn't. It isn't like a fictional. I've been asked that a million times. Why don't you just call it Happy Land? <laughs> I, it was. It was back when everything was fake. When people, people had Twitter accounts, it was fake. Fill in the blank. And there's still some of those. They're still around. Uh, you know, if you're fake politician's name, something like that. Fake. Right. You know, KFC PR or something like that. So that's. It's always been. That has no name. It's never been named. It's not even clear where it is. It's somewhere in America, but uh, the county's made up. The, the freeway it's on is made up. I went to a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, this boy. <laughs> So uh, to answer your question, so the, so the fact that it's fake is in the title. Uh, people occasionally 
just say back to me, uh, you know, uh, doing a joke and they, they, they reply, basically Disney right now. Like, yep, that's Disney. Like, yeah, yes, that was, yeah, that's what I do. I'm making fun of theme parks. So I don't know exactly who you're, <laughs> are you trying to tell me? I don't know. If, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that. Obviously, every reply is valued. Please feel free to reply to me. Don't be shy. But I do wonder about things like that that are just sort of saying back to me, not like, oh, you nailed it. Just like, basically Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got the joke from Disney, and just yeah, that was the whole point. <laughs> that was maybe as close as I've come to that. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, if I can, also I think the humor is not quite as subtle. If I can say that, mm-hmm. the Onion is great. I'm a huge fan, but this, these jokes hopefully are out there, and you get it. Uh, a lot of exclamation points as well. I'm trying to mimic that happy uh, demeanor and persona of the theme parks. So hopefully, within all those things, you, you can you understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Right. I wonder if some of those are the really excited. I get that reference. That's just <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Once this pandemic is over, you know, fingers crossed that is sooner rather than later, but you know, we got to be safe. Do you have any being a, a kind of a theme park aficionado uh, such as yourself? Do you have any plans to to visit any parks, any dream parks or anything like that? Do you have any do you have any plans once we're able to actually start? Uh, joining the the world again. It's funny. We actually were planning. My wife and I our anniversary is in September, and we're going. We had a Disney World vacation planned. Like had to have our My Disney Experience site and had made reservations for everything. And all the emails came in saying those are all been canceled. Uh, even if they reopen, I don't think we are going. We just don't think this is. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm as of right now, I'm not have no plans to go to a park. Because who knows when really is the the best time to go? We actually, I've been there once. As a teenager, my wife had never been to Walt Disney World. We were going to go together and have a week of anniversary fun and and see, see Star Wars and everything. And that is now on hold. I I am curious. I, I mean, you can probably tell from the tweets and hopefully the response maybe backs us up. I think it is a colossally terrible idea to go up in the parks. <laughs> get rid of get rid of the emails, folks. If that's an unpopular opinion, I think it is a it is far far too early to know what right. is going to happen. We're seeing spikes in states right now. I have family all over the country, and I'm tracking it all over the place, including here in New York. Uh, one place that seems to be going down is here because we went through the worst of it. But I don't know if – I don't think we're ready to on, – especially on mass, wear masks, social distance, be six feet apart, be seated apart, be ready for – they're limiting capacity so people won't be able to get in anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite even sure how that works. Like limit capacity, when do you tell people the park is – you know, uh, July 4th is one thing when we reach capacity and a fire marshal shows up, but just on random days, you just don't sell as many tickets, I guess. And so where do the, those people go? They just don't show up. I don't know. It seems to me, based on as a, as a fan and as an employee, I think we're getting ready for another closure. That we by Christmas, like November, or October, or somewhere, our flu season, we'll, it'll be all, we'll be closed all over again, which will be hilariously funny. I think we're going to love that. But uh, it's, 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 it's far, it's just too soon. We don't know. I mean, there's a park open now. Right. I mean, Florida is is now open, universal, I believe, like today or tomorrow when we're recording this. Hmm. So that's it. It's like, you know, New York is in phase one. We just be in phase one uh, today, today or yesterday. And yet Florida is everyone in, a, in the world come to Florida and go into our park. I don't one of those things is wrong. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm not sure when I would love to go uh, as, as a Star Wars fan to to see get Galaxy's Edge. In either park, really, but uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. We've been tracking uh, comic book conventions and fan expos and and whatnot like those. <clears throat> and there's some where it's like, yeah, you you should cancel. Good good job, good on you. But then there's others that'll make their big announcement and be like, we're still operating, we're still going, and we by the way, we need volunteers. <laughs> and then <laughs> having having to listen to the vendors, people who have bought booth space have to risk like not going and lose their deposit or go and risk getting infected. So, and we just shake our heads going, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to, I don't need to go to New York comic con. I don't need to go to Boston. <laughs> it, it's, it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I understand that people want the reason to, people want it to be open and the way that the corporations owning these parks want them to be open. I understand that. I, I just don't, I, it seemed, also seemed kind of sad seeing people in the parks with masks on and not being able to you have to wave at the characters they can't hug you or touch you or mm-hmm. anything like that it's uh is that the experience is because the prices haven't gone down 
<laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not discounting it for the lack of princess interaction all of a sudden. <laughs> so why not wait a year or two, and, and hopefully things are back to normal, and then <laughs> and then go because it seems. Yeah, I don't. I don't quite get. I mean, everyone's very. I see all the photos. I get a. I have a huge incoming fee at this big theme park. I follow, you know, the accounts as well and see what's mm-hmm. going on. That's where I get the ideas for a lot of the jokes. And seeing people in masks and people standing far apart is just sort of not 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 Disney at least. Mm-hmm. It's not Disney to me. Uh, maybe other parks have um, it's a different story, but yeah, it's just sort of sad. To get back, yeah, I mean, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Alex. I was gonna completely derail. <laughs> Do it. You were derailing. <laughs> to get back to your park, to fake theme park, and I, I see you basically as you know, uh, you're you're a world builder. You've created this entire place. Like Stanley created so many superheroes, and he's it's he's he's you know people want to be creators and makers and be a world builder. Basically, do you have a map in your head of where all the rides are and do you need a spreadsheet for your, for all the characters and how many princesses there are? Or like, do you just think of them occasionally and like they're, they're just characters in a story that you've written. So there are they easily accessible. And, and when you have your posts about, um, the, the, the star Wars, uh, esque movies and whatnot and all the, all the spinoffs and which ones take place where, like, do you have to, draw those out to see how they line up or do you just make it up as you go there there is a canon i don't know if that makes me look better or worse uh to you and the listeners but there there is a, a not not very complex canon there's four princesses for example and i and i constantly delineate them to people they're in the first book i've then tweet threads as well get to know the princesses and kind of break them down uh, I now have a, a drawing. I hired an artist. I actually created a drawing of the four of them. So it's hopefully that's clear. Uh, the, there are also the rides that keep coming up and again. They're always um, alliterative. Mm-hmm. So Ocean Odyssey and Volcano Voyage and Chaos Coaster. So that's, hopefully you can also tell those are kind of funny. Similar letters are funny, I guess. Mm-hmm. So those those are constant. Beyond that, it, I kind of enjoy screwing around <laughs> uh, and, and every once in a while people people remember th- i love when people remember things if anyone you know can quote me to me oh my god that's the best so if they mention volcano voyage out of nowhere out of no context that's like why well, even reading you remember this from <laughs> however many weeks or months ago but beyond that i uh, you know it's been not clear what exactly i'll say you know, the park closes at six and then the next day the fireworks showing out at nine and no one who cares you know <laughs> i i don't have the time to be tied to that kind of you know, that's sort of limitations uh but yeah i do keep track i am you know now, now there's space wars uh, nebulous rim mm-hmm. is what it's called that now exists in the park <laughs> i thought about uh, working on getting a map of some kind that's a kind of a complicated because mm-hmm. it's a, a, i mean an actual map people can see like for the books because those have to they have to be funny there's no real point in making a map that's just like, here's a map <laughs> of a fictional park. But uh, uh, c- comedy drawing is very intricate and complex and expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so and how much I need to be involved in every single thing. Like, make jokes like this. And how right. do you tell an artist what jokes I want to see someone losing their wallet? I want to see a princess you know, grimacing at a kid. And that's a lot of things to describe to someone. Yeah. They have to then execute. So I've been working on that for a while. If any artists are listening, I want to collaborate. Um, I, I have some money, <laughs> so it'd be nice to bring that that to life. I wouldn't recommend the park to life. I like that. That's why even having I have my hands on some stock footage. You mentioned the flyover drone footage. That is footage that I have the rights to. The princess video. I'm very proud to have made that with 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 friends. Uh, friends I did not pay. They're professionals I did pay. Like the princess. Uh, so whatever I keep, there's no park. It does not exist. There's no single photo of it or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, even I was anonymous. You know, for many years, there's nobody to like kind of to to look at to direct to. Uh, so that's as much as I can do. There, there's, there's something of a canon. You hopefully you read enough, you'll begin to see the same names over and over again. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Jaguar as well, and Murph Danway, the CEO. But beyond that, it's just a free for all of whatever's funny. <laughs> Speaking of, I, you you had mentioned that you did this anonymously for for a while. You, you've only been uh, kind of out in the open that this is you since 2017. Is that correct? Yeah, and it's so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that was a lot i went through a lot because it was the idea was there was such a, a mystique uh back in the early days of twitter what who were these accounts i think we still even have it now people are supposed to be working in the government were tweeting sort of anonymously that's still we want who that is and that's all i don't i don't mean to dismiss that i was i was a big part of it i wanted to do it too so yes i when i first began doing it there's no name i the park didn't have a name 
and people had all kinds of theory. People would, would would contact me and say, "Are you a manager in Florida? <laughs> Are you an employee in in, in a Cedar Point?" And I thought, well, just, let's just keep going. This is great. And then I realized, well, there's no way to take credit for any of these <laughs> things. Even the music video doesn't have my name on it. The music video has everybody else's name but mine. So eventually I realized I'm not getting anything out of this. <laughs> this has served its purpose. Now I, as a writer, uh, might be able to make, make something out of this. So what can I, I might as well reveal myself. And then I can say publish books under my own name and <laughs> get, the, get the money. I have all these layers. So I, when I would do podcast interviews – like this one, I used a burner app and masked my phone number. It seemed like it was coming from Orlando. <laughs> Just I went through all this. I never used my name. I used a, a different email address. I often was a, a character. I often appeared as Murph Cantley. That was just easier. He sort of the screwball, wacko, P.T. Barnum kind of CEO of the park. <laughs> And it's easier just to talk to you as myself. <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah, from now on, everyone, it's me, Jason Ginsburg. Hello, I was a, I, and I, I have the hopefully the resume as a former employee of one of the major parks that people will, will be okay with it. Be me being the voice behind the theme park. As we uh, get to the end here, um, if if people wanted to uh, partake in the in the anniversary. Uh, festivities or if they just uh, wanted to follow along with fake theme park um i think we mentioned it earlier but it's nice to actually hear it from from the uh the person who makes it if someone wanted to to, to go and support how would they do so yes it's absolutely free that's the great thing about it uh so on twitter at fake theme park it's all one word fake theme park uh if you hate twitter if you uh, never use twitter if you've been suspended from twitter <laughs> it's on facebook as well and often different jokes because i don't why not i often i about half the time it's the same other times i just make other jokes because uh, i have more again i have more room to play with so facebook as well it's a it's a page so you just put at, even at, at, at symbol at fake theme park in there. You'll see it. Same same icon as it is on Twitter. Uh, on YouTube, there's a fun music video that uh, people put uh, some time and effort into that you might enjoy. That is a parody of a Disney princess song. It's called I'm a Theme Park Princess. So it's what it's like to be a princess in a real park, in the real world. Not a fantasy princess, but a princess working <laughs> in a park, dealing with people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on YouTube uh, under the fake theme park banner. I'm a Theme Park Princess is called. You actually can buy it on iTunes for 99 cents as well. And then the two books. Uh, you look at my name, Jason Ginsburg, G I N S B U R G, uh, or if you want the full name, well, please type the whole thing in. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> if the princess rolls her eyes, your wish will come true. Uh, and then the, the one most recent one is you must be this tall to exit the park. That's really all all you can do. Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, all totally free. If you want to buy the books, even available on paperback or Kindle, uh, I would be delighted uh, to have uh, share more material uh, with the fans. Excellent. Currently sitting at 12.9 thousand followers on Twitter and uh, 5.7 thousand followers on Facebook. Uh, well done, Jason. Honestly, it's I feel like you've done a lot in 10 years, um, whether it's to people who are just fans of theme parks or employees such as us who the jokes just really hit home uh you've created something rad and it resonates with a lot of us so so thank you thank you for making it thank you for continuing to make it um and congratulations on on 10 years thanks very much the fact that people still care still come to it after all this time means a lot to me it really does people anyone wants to respond you don't have to make jokes you can just you can direct message me the dms are open on fake theme park you can do it on facebook as well uh ask real questions ask funny questions i'm happy to respond it is just me <laughs> maybe for a lot of times it was a team of people because i constantly say we as the park it's just me mm -hmm. there's no <laughs> so yeah feel free to uh to partake in the fun you know make this make this big theme park world together Go and follow at Fake Theme Park, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Buy the books if you're if you're into if you're really into what you're seeing, or even if you're not, just buy them anyways. <laughs> Give people money. They'd, uh, they'd make good gifts too. Exactly. Hey, exactly. being theme park fan in your life, indeed. Um, Jason, thank you so much for coming on yet again. This was an absolute pleasure. Um, we may have we may have to maybe meet up again in the future to discuss uh, monsters. Maybe that's like a little teaser now. I'm putting <laughs> it out on the air, so now we have to commit to it. Um, but uh, again, thank you so much for coming on, giving us uh, giving us some of your time, and congrats again. No, nope, uh, Alex and Jr. Anytime. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this week. 
Uh, until next time, I have been JR. I'm Alec. And I'm Jason Ginsberg. And this has been episode 406 of Opinions May Vary. <laughs>